Hello, hello, hello. My name is Jessie and welcome back to another What I Eat in a Week. Wow, it is week four of the pantry challenge already. We're halfway there and I feel like I just started to get creative with all my stuff and it's already halfway. Maybe we should extend it? No, just kidding. <laughs> all right, so let's see what we had this week. Let's start out the week strong. Today is day 22 and we're having a one pan lamb chop with Brussels sprout. And if you know me by now, I love one pan dinner. It's quick, easy to cook and to clean. For this dinner, the ingredients are really simple. So we just have some Brussels sprouts and some of our lamb chops. And to put this meal together, it is another 10 minute meal. First, I preheat the oven to 400 degrees. Marinate the Brussels sprout with some oil and some Burry Steak House seasoning. Mix it together. We season the lamb both sides with the Burry Steak House seasoning. We're gonna hard sear the lamb in an oven safe pan, both sides, about one minute each side. Once done searing, we will add another tablespoon of oil around the meat. Add in the garlic and then the Brussels sprout all around it. Make sure the Brussels sprout comes in contact with the pan so that's when you get the roasting flavor. Put the whole pan into the preheated oven for 7 minutes. Lamb is done. Let's plate this. And dinner is ready. That was one delicious dinner and we haven't had lamb in a while so that was such a treat to have. And for me, making dinner doesn't have to take hours. You can see that most of my meals are about 10-15 minutes max and everything comes out perfectly. Yeah. Day 23 is a Tuesday, so guess what? We're having Taco Tuesday! For the ingredients, we have some shrimps, some thin steaks, sliced red onions, bell peppers in different colors, sour cream, avocados, chipotle salsa, and some shredded lettuce. Let's put this meal together. First, I would start with prepping the ingredients, shredding the lettuce, cutting up two avocados. Oh, it's so pretty. And a lemon. Then we just put them in one bowl with some salt and pepper, mash it, slice the onion, and use a little bit of it finely chopped into the guacamole. And just like that, we have homemade guacamole. Using taco seasoning to season the steak both sides. Same taco seasoning with the shrimp. Preheat the cast iron grill on high heat with some oil. Part sear the steak both sides. Take it out. Now add in all of our vegetable onion and bell peppers. Slice the steaks. Add the shrimps into the cast iron. Sear both sides. Now we're going to add the steak back into the pan. Mix them all together with our chipotle salsa. Bring everything to the table and we have our own taco bar at home. Taco Tuesday is almost my default meal every Tuesday because I can't think of anything to eat. And usually when we have a taco night, I like to have it all on the table so we can make our own taco while we're talking about our days and that's why I usually use it on a cast iron and leave it on the table so it could stay warm longer and what's a better way to spend a Tuesday night, right? Happy Wednesday! Today is day 24 of our pantry challenge and living along the coast, we love having those lobster rolls and I could just run out and get one but during pantry challenge, I decided to make my own version and they are the cousins of the lobster rolls that you would have the buttery one and the creamy one as well and almost everyone would have some frozen shrimp in the freezer and some burger buns so I decided to make a long video out of it it's actually not that long, it's like 5 minutes long but I will be linking it below and also put a tag up here for you guys so check it out guys, it was so Good. Day 25 is that day of the week when I have to work with the flowers in the pantry and I've been craving for some homemade pizza and that's what I make this day pizza and this pizza doesn't have a lot of the traditional ingredients because I'm just using what we have in the fridge and I made my own pizza sauce for the first time too let's check it out 
So for the pizza dough, it's pretty standard that you have the bread flour, the yeast, sugar, salt, and then make the dough yourself. For the pizza sauce, I have some tomato sauce, some tomato peas. For the toppings, I'm using what I have in the fridge, which is just our salami, Canadian bacon, sausages, mushrooms, some red onions, and some cheese that we have in the fridge. We didn't have any mozzarella, so there is none in this pizza, but it's so good still. First, we're gonna make the dough with some red flour, instant yeast, sugar, water, oil, and garlic salt. Mix it together, let it rise while working on the pizza sauce. For the pizza sauce, we have tomato paste, Italian seasoning, red pepper flakes, mix it together, add in the tomato sauce. Now moving on to the topping, I have these two sharp cheese in the fridge. Now the dough is done rising, I'm gonna stretch it out by putting it between two parchment papers. Using my hand to spread it out until the size that I want. Using a fork to poke hole through the bottom of the crust so it won't pop up when we bake. Now go on to pizza sauce, cheese, meat, onion, mushrooms, and we bake it in our cast iron pan at 450 for 15 minutes. Look at that! Oh my goodness, it's so good! That was my first time making a homemade pizza from start to finish for in less than an hour. In the cast iron pan, actually make the crust so crunchy. I didn't want to buy a whole pizza kit to or a pizza stone to make a pizza once in a blue moon. So the cast iron trick was a really, really good choice. Day 26, we have some cauliflower in the fridge and it needs to be used up today. So it actually worked out perfectly because I love a traditional beef broccoli when you order takeout, but I don't like broccoli as much as I do love cauliflower. So instead of doing the traditional beef broccoli, I'm actually making my favorite beef and cauliflower. So for the ingredients, we have the cauliflower and some of the green bell peppers I need to use up and also adding some color and uh, a portion of our flat meat in the freezer. To put this together, just like any stir fry, it's gonna come together so quick, so we have to have everything ready. But then we slice the flat meat and marinating the meat with some garlic oil, salt, pepper, sugar, cornstarch, mix it together. In a hot wok, add a tablespoon of oil. Once the wok is really hot, add in the beef. Spread it out so the beef can come in contact with the wok. Once the beef is about 80% done, we remove it. In the same wok, we're adding the cauliflower. About a quarter cup of chicken broth. Cover it for about two minutes so it can steam. Add in your remaining vegetable and garlic. Mix them all up together. Add the beef back in. Finish cooking the beef and then plate it. Dare I say that was better than takeout. I love all the flavors in the beef broccoli that you get from the restaurant, but I just don't like the texture of the broccoli as much as the cauliflower. Day 27, since I've been so actively cooking every night, tonight is a cheat night. <laughs> so um, the last time I made chicken pot pies, I made extra filling. So tonight I took out the filling from the freezer and our pastry sheets to put together the chicken pot pie. I actually have a short of me making this chicken pot pie when I last made it. So I'll just pop it here for you guys to look at. Oh boy, was I glad to have those frozen fillings for our chicken pot pies. And the pastry sheet in the freezer came together so quickly and the dinner was so comforting. I love a good chicken pot pie. Last day of week 4, day 28, and today we have another freezer meal. So I took out some of our frozen egg rolls, and we just double frying them to have it extra crunchy, and just do some lettuce wrap with it. Let's check it out! So for the ingredients, we have frozen egg rolls that we're gonna fry up, dry rice noodle sheets, some mints from our garden, and some lettuce. 
What makes this meal so good is the double frying of the egg rolls. First, we fry these egg rolls in a lower temperature at about 300 degrees. While the egg roll is frying, we're gonna soak the rice noodle sheets in hot water. Once the egg rolls turn a little golden, we take them out. At the same time, we drain out the noodle sheet as well. Crank up the heat in the oils for it to be hot at 390 and put the egg rolls back in, double frying them for about two minutes. Now that the egg rolls are done, we're gonna make the lettuce wrap. First, a piece of lettuce, a sheet of our rice noodles, some herbs, the egg roll, and dip it in this yummy dipping sauce called nuk jam. If you hear the snoring noise, that's Wolfie trying to compete with me. <laughs> he snores so loud. Anyways, deep fried food never tastes so healthy when you just wrap it around, you know, lettuce and herbs. And the double frying just add that extra crunch for the egg rolls. Oh man, it was so yummy. What do you guys think of my seven meals? Oh wow, I still cannot believe that we are already halfway through the challenge. At first, 60 days sounds so long, but now I'm like, I just got started. <laughs> and yes, our fresh produce is getting a bit very low in the fridge. But I'm not worried because I feel like it's actually giving me more opportunities to be even more creative, trying to come up with these good meals. And the whole point of this is I wanted to show that we could have a good dinner or a good meal in general every day without having to spend hours and hours in the kitchen. Most of our meals take less than 30 minutes. And if it's longer than that, I would just save it for special occasions. And we would have some of that coming up soon. So come back next week for another recap of what we eat in a week. And don't forget to check out our yummy shrimp rolls recipe. It's so good. If you like lobster rolls, this is better. Okay, until next time, if you could do me a favor and hit the subscribe button, it would be greatly appreciate it. Thank you and see you guys next time.